Hey guys, all right, so let's start with making this garland. The color that we have today is we're gonna use one color instead of our typical many colors. And I, what I wanna do with this is show you how simple it is to create a really contrasting but decorative look also with just one color. And again, I would, I'm the type of person that would rather have one color that's double stuffed than have many single stuffed colors because really, even if it's a double stuffed shade, there's a lot that you can play on with, especially if you're adding other accents like florals and orbs. So again, the shade that we are using today, it's the chocolate brown on the inside and then the jewel teal on the outside. We're using five inches, 11 inches, 16 inches, and 36 inches. We've got one bag of each size, except the 36 inches we have two bags this time so let's get started the first step is going to be we're going to start inflating our 16 and 12 inch balloons so i'm going to start with the 16. now if you're going to be using qualitax you're going to notice that all of your 16 inch balloons are going to be oval to reduce this there's a few things that you can do a very simple one is while you're inflating keep one hand over the balloon so that it inflates more round another one is deflated a bit and as you're deflating, kind of push into it. You can use your body, whatever you find is more convenient. I personally find that it's easier for me to inflate as I go, so I would do it like this. And so that's just the minor difference you get from getting an oval balloon to just getting a bit more of a rounder balloon. And again, you can shape them later, but again, why I don't like to do that is because when you tie them, when you do it like this, no one really gets to see this bottom part, which is why it's not as important. Just make sure that your top color is popping through as it should. So if you're under inflating your size and you're seeing that the darker color is starting to appear, just take the balloon and just push it from the bottom here so that the air goes to the top and we're gonna proceed to tie. Again, when you're tying double stuffed balloons, you do not need to tie both ends of the balloon. Just pull out that first inner end, which would be the chocolate brown, and tie. One knot is enough. Pull that through, and there we go. And that's our first one. So this is a 16 inch duplet, meaning two balloons tied together. We're gonna be making one of these, and then we're gonna be making three more of the 12 inch to match them. I'll be back when that's done. All right, now that all my balloons are tied, I'm going to proceed to make my first cluster. Now again, every cluster has eight balloons in total. So you would either have size difference of all uh, 12 or 11 inch or all 16 inch or a mix of both. In this case, out of the eight balloons, six or 11 inches or 12 inches, depending on if you use STI or Qualitex, I just use both sizing, but generally they're the same size that I'm talking about. So we have six of the 11 inch and two of the 16 inch. So I'm gonna proceed to twist them into a cluster like this. And like this. <laughs> Now we're gonna take both and make our first cluster. Like this, so I'm gonna grab both in one hand and I'm gonna use the other hand to twist two balloons from opposite quads, so the opposite two groups, together so that they hold in one piece. Just like that, one time is enough. So I know I did it right when I can take it, shake it, and it won't go nowhere. And that is the first cluster. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make seven of these. So out of these seven clusters, four are going to be large clusters like this, including 16 inches, and three are going to be exclusively 11 inches. So I'll be back when that's done. All right guys, so we have our big clusters, we have our small clusters. Now that they're inflated, we're gonna start by attaching them together. So I'm gonna take a look at my big clusters 
and I'm gonna find out which cluster to me looks like the biggest, and that will be my starting cluster. So to me, it looks like this one. Um, you'll see in the cluster guide specifically how many balloons I used for each cluster and what size they are, so don't feel like you need to look into it right now. I have the guide uh, down linked below. So this is my biggest cluster. Why I say it's the biggest one? Because it's the only cluster that has only two 11-inch balloons. So six of them are 16-inch and two of them are 11-inch, and that'll be my starting one. So the first thing I'm going to do is identify my 4 by 4 so my clear outline of where my four balloons are, because your garland will not be straight or structurally um, you know, giving if it's not secured properly. And for you to secure it properly, you need to make sure that each cluster is sitting into the four by four. So once I have it, I'm gonna reach my hand down, pull out an end and attach the second cluster. So we're gonna go big, small, big, small, big, small. So let's start with the big, pulling out an end from right there. I'm gonna hold that with another hand and I'm gonna take a small cluster with my other hand. And this is my small cluster here. My hand is already inside of the four by four and here's the four by four on the other side. I'm just gonna, and again, you don't need to tie both ends. You can, but you don't need to. You, you can only tie with, you can only tie with the only the inside balloon. I'm gonna put them on top and tie. There we go, and once I'm done tying, I have something like this. So this is again, split down the half, this is the larger cluster, and this tied in the center is the smaller cluster over here. And that's what we have. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie each large cluster to a small cluster. Now, I know I made it seem very easy. Do not get frustrated if it is difficult for you to tie your first clusters together. It does take a lot of callousy hand strength, and if you do have nails, it will be harder. Take off all rings and bracelets so that when your hands are in there, you don't pop anything accidentally. And again, it is mostly practice. I like to use my body, so one hand is pulling the top cluster, and my body is supporting that bottom cluster, so I have tension, so that when I'm pulling, when I'm tying, I'm not pulling. The pulling action happens when you pull the two clusters together. When you're tying, that's how people get tired. You never pull when you tie. If you're tying, you're simply tying the ends that you've already pulled. So my little tip there is section it off on your body, bottom cluster on your knee or on your body, however you feel most comfortable. Top cluster, pull it down, get your two ends and start tying. Again, your fingers should never be pulling when you're tying. So there we go.
All right, so now that I have four pieces that are large cluster, small cluster, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step back and I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna identify which one of my two pieces here is the largest and which one is the small. And again, because each piece has a large and a small cluster, we're gonna lay them out and we're gonna just see. So this cluster I'm holding, I can already see just by holding it, it's not that big. It has a couple of the 16 inches in it, but that's it. So this is definitely going to be my top piece of the garland. So I'm just going to lay that down. So now I have three pieces left. I'm going to grab which one visually looks biggest to me, which is again that first piece that we did with the really, really a lot of the 16 inches in the bottom. I'm going to take that because as you can visually see the garland that we're going to be constructing is going to be going up the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the largest piece and connect it with the second largest piece. So I'm going to again, here's my little four by four nice and clean. The center line always has to be very tied down, solid, so that's easy to work for you. Always pick the end that has the most give. Look around, maybe some one end is shorter than the, the other. Always make it easy for yourself. I just found an end that, that was bigger. And I'm going to grab this cluster here. And again, since my large cluster is at the bottom, then my hand is in the small cluster, and here's the second piece. The large cluster is gonna come on top and connect to that bottom smaller cluster just like that. So I'm gonna look over here. I have a clear four by four on this side. I'm gonna reach my hand in. And that first hand is still holding the bottom. Find myself a piece and attach. So again, I go like this and tie. All right, and it's tied. And there we have it. And that is our solid piece. So as you can see, we can move around with it later, but this whole long piece, it's one solid structure. So this will at least give you the security you need to start building out your shape. So now that I have these two pieces attached, I'm gonna go ahead, put the bottom to the bottom. And now I'm going to attach this last piece onto here. So that bit that we said was going to be the top, we're going to attach that on now. So again, I'm just going to flip it over so you can see I still have my clean 4x4. Four four. I have my other end here, clean 4x4, four four, right there. I'm going to reach my hand in, find myself an end. And oop, that happens. That happens. Okay, and then we're gonna tie. All right, and there we go. And that's that last bit of our garland. So now we're just gonna reposition and take a wider shot so we can start shaping the garland. Okay guys, so now that we have our very, very straight looking garland, what we're gonna start doing is we're gonna start shaping it. So just because we inflate a certain amount of balloons in a cluster doesn't mean that when we start tying those clusters together, it's exactly where we want it to be. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna lean it up against here because this is where I want the garland. And I'm gonna start with the bottom here. Now what I want the bottom to be is I want the bottom to be nice and full. So I want all the largest clusters to look as large as possible and the smallest clusters to look as small as possible. So I'm gonna start working from the bottom up. So I personally really like this, this bottom section here to be like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start securing the work that we're doing. So since I've already positioned this bottom cluster to be here, I'm going to attach it. Today I'm using soft yarn, so it's a little bit of a thicker string. Some carts allow or don't allow to use glue or tape or fishing line. So you're going to have to verify uh, with the vendor of the cart what they allow to use on the cart. Um, to make sure that it doesn't damage. So I'm just gonna cut myself off a little bit. And again, I'm using white because the cart is white. If the cart was black, I would use black. And just like fishing line, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it in 
You don't need to tie as long as you lasso very well. We lasso in a figure eight motion around a couple of balloons. So we take our string, thread it through the bottom balloons. Like floss, sometimes instead of pushing, you kind of want to teeter-totter it in there. And I'm gonna start wrapping. Don't worry about that top section. We're gonna secure that in a moment. So once I've wrapped this in, I'm gonna go around and I'm actually going to secure this to the back leg of the cart. So I'm gonna take my string. I'll just move this for a second. I'm gonna take my string here and I'm gonna secure it to this back leg. So I'm gonna pull the garland in and I'm gonna secure it to this back leg here. And if you can see the string, don't worry about that because we are going to be detailing it. So you won't be able to see. So I'm just tying it once and tying it twice. There we go. Now we're gonna continue working. We're gonna go up and now these handlebars, they're not gonna be seen. Maybe we want them seen just a little bit. So I'm just gonna twist as I go. And again, my next connection point, now that it's connected down there, my next connection point will be up here or to the handle over there. So I'm gonna cut myself off a bit. I'm going to come in here and I'm gonna attach basically on the same level. So I would say it's about here. So I'm gonna floss it through and lasso. And now I'm gonna tie it off to one of the sweet cart handles in the back. Never anything in the front. All right, and now that section's done. So what that gave me is it still gave me room to work with the garland in case I still wanna shape it. I don't want it to be just tight, tight to the sweet cart. Tight doesn't always mean secure or pretty. So now I'm gonna be shaping up the top, putting it into place. And you see this big 16 inch, what I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna to try to rotate it out this way. Twist it out like that. There we go. Now I'm just gonna step back to see how it looks. It's kind of hard to tell what you're doing when you're so close. There we go. Okay, and now what I'm going to do to start attaching my three foots, I need to secure that very top part. So I'm gonna go behind the sweet cart and my third attachment point is going to be right here just under the cusp of this, so I'm going to be wrapping around and the garland's going to be pulling up just like that. So I would just secure off here first. And once I'm done that, I can take my line here, pull the balloons to where I think they should be and I want them kind of up like this. Just to have a point to secure to, I'm just gonna secure right now and then I'm gonna step back and see what that looks like. And again, lassoing in a figure eight 
so going under. And again, if you can't quite get it, floss it through. Use two hands and floss it through. There we go. So I'm going to step back, see what I have. OK. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start making it go out a bit more. We're, start, we're going to start to create that shape. So now that it's secure, I can kind of pivot the 16 inch to give it that look over there, what we're going for. So maybe I'll just rotate that out a bit. And to fill in this hole here, we're going to take one of our pre-made large clusters, small clusters, and we're just going to position it right out in front like this. And as you can see, that very, very quickly already creates a thicker base and it hides that hole. But you also see that little detail of the handle coming out here. So that's also nice. So I'm going to secure those two. And for this one, because I'm going to be securing two balloons together, I'm going to be using the black yarn. And yarn is just nicer to work with. It's softer on the hands. So I'm going to give myself an amount. And again, whenever I do lasso, I don't tie. I never tie. So I'm flossing. Floss my yarn in. Lasso. Take your piece here, bring it through, and position this piece. And I like to position this piece like this. Oops. Sorry. So small cluster on the floor, larger cluster to the larger cluster as well. Probably like that. See what fits more naturally with the shape. And if it looks like it's fitting well, secure it. I'm just giving a snug little tight pull. And when I feel like it's nice and snug, I'm just going to lasso, lasso. And that's it. And you can just drop that there. And that's this connecting piece here. So now let's step back, see what we have. And now what we want to do is we want to take this connecting piece, bring it back here center, because this connecting piece, I kind of wanted to attach it to the front leg here. So that's what we're going to do. And here it doesn't really matter, white or black yarn, you're not going to see anything anyway. So I'm going to take some black yarn. I'm going to attach it to the leg first. Okay. And now when it's attached to the leg, I'm going to go in. And I'll attach it to the center of the garland or to the center of this particular cr cluster. Cluster. So now that we have these three points, let's start attaching on the three foots. And the three foots will kind of guide us more onto the shape. So let's get those guys inflated. Now, my bottom three foots, I always like to inflate right to three feet and just give it a little bit of air out. Like that, so it's nice and soft. And now let's start positioning. So we do know that we're definitely going to have like a little detail piece coming down here, but we know that we need to have this garland kind of cascade down. So the first three foot that we have has to sit somewhere in here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take only the inside one here, pull it out, 
and I'm going to attach it right into this bottom cluster here. So I'm going to pull out an end. And I'm going to tie. There we go. So let's see what we have. So that'll be our first cluster over there, our first three foot. So now let's put on the second one. What I want to do before I do that is I just want to continue shaping it a bit more until I'm happy with the bone structure of it. Right now, I personally feel like it's a little bit too straight. So I'm just going to continue doing that. All right, so I'm happier with the shape, how it's going. It's kind of starting to curve in the way that I want. So I'm going to continue putting on the three foots. All right, guys, so the second three foot that we're going to do, second from the bottom, I want to do just a little bit smaller than the first. So never bigger, but just a bit smaller. I would say that's about the right size. OK. So I'm going to go behind here. And since I want a little bit of a dip here, I'm thinking of putting this one right here. Maybe a bit smaller, like this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the chocolate brown out. I'm going to pull my hand in here find an end and once again I'm just going to tie right into here. All right, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to take this piece and move it over on this side to create more of a fuller base closer to that three foot there. Because what I'm thinking is it's going to become too big if I try to position it like this. So let's just see what that would look like. So I'm just going to tie a rig here. I'm going to take the work we did and just pull it a bit more closer to here. Maybe even a bit further. see how this section here would look if it was propped up underneath. So I'm going to attach these two sections before I start reconstructing it back. So I'm just going to floss through. I have my end here. I'm 
I'm gonna bring the three foot up. I'm just gonna go behind. Push the two together and connect them. Now that I did some restructuring on the bottom, obviously the top shifted. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to reshape it. So again, our center points, there's one secure point here. I'm gonna cut off these two because I'm gonna reattach them. I'm gonna attach in the exact same place, the exact same way. I'm just gonna reshape it a bit. All right guys, so what I did was I inflated another small cluster here because what I was finding was that no matter how much I pulled it over, it just was too straight or a little bit too jagged. So what I'm gonna do before I continue shaping is I'm gonna put the small cluster at the top. Yes, you can just rip three foots off. Nothing will happen to them. So now I'm at the point where that bottom, the shape, I'm starting to like it. I've confirmed that the overall cascading effect is happening. I'm going to secure this top part, but what I'm going to work on right now is filling out this bottom part. So I'm going to add a cluster and fill that in right here. And the cluster is going to be not only 11 inches, but 16 inches inclusive. Now I'm just gonna test it for size to make sure that it fits right in. That looks good, right about there. So now this line here that I have, I'm just gonna thread it through. So I'm just gonna take my cluster, no twisting, no nothing. I'm just gonna take it and thread it on. And that's what we have. There we go. So now I'm gonna step back, see what that shape looks like. And now I just wanna trail off. I wanna close off this ending between the three foot and its cluster. So I'm gonna make two small clusters. One cluster, very small, like nine inch and just 11 inch and one cluster, 11 inch. Tie those two together and tie it to that. So that's what we're gonna do. So this is that first cluster. The one made up 11 inch, and this guy is going to sit right in here, so it blocks off the connection of the three foot to its cluster there. It's gonna sit right there. So I'm gonna see how that looks. And that makes this garland more cohesive. So now we're gonna attach this bit in. Just take a bit of black yarn, again, not a lot.
take your little attachment piece, and lasso. Again, some people like to put their hand around. I like to lasso with the cluster. Okay, now that I have this piece here, I'm gonna take it in, face the small balloons out like that so that your detail is nice and seen and secure it to the cluster right beside, just like that. And again, you don't have to do it too tight, just as long as it holds. There we go, and now you can't attach it. All right, so now we're gonna continue securing this part up here. So now it's time to accent. The first thing that I do is I try to put on the big orbs and then I put on the small ones where I don't accent with the big ones. So I'm going to start with the top because obviously at the top we have a lot to fill out. And I'm going to either position it. I never want to put a big one over on the end here. So I would never put a three foot or a big orb here. But I'm thinking, what about right here? How does that look? So I'm either thinking one over here or maybe even like this with that section being filled out or even just right here. So what I'm using today is I'm using gaff tape. It's G-A-F-F -F tape. It's going to be linked below. You can buy it on Amazon and you just rip yourself off a strip and attach it to the backing of the orb anywhere really just so you get it on the balloon and you have excess to attach on and I definitely liked where this one looked And we're going to move on to position the next big orb. So again, just two inch piece of gaff tape, half on the orb itself, doesn't matter, front side, back side, doesn't matter. I'm going to go back and tape away into the balloon. So my tape is never seen. My tape is between the balloons so that even when you walk up to the orb right in here, right, you never see it. And the orb, just so you guys know, it's very, uh, it's very on there, so you can't pop it off. So let's just look back and see what we have. It's starting to get that shimmer and, and the rose gold really looks nice with the green. Most people opt for silver or gold, but I think rose gold is a nice option too. So now I'm actually gonna go ahead. I definitely want, I'm assuming there would be one here. Yes, yes. And my other little tip is if an orb is directly under another orb, it'll look a little bit off. So try to get them a little bit more staggered. And again, we're going to take for the little guy two inches, tape the back, and put it right in here. And for those of you that have been watching my classes, you guys know I use fishing line, 260s, glue dots to attach my uh, orbs. But now I've gotten really into this gaff tape. It's just really easy. And gaff tape doesn't pop the balloons as much, so if I do need to reposition, it makes that much easier as well. So this little one here. Next, maybe I'll go for a bigger one. Yeah. So let's see where this one can go. Again, I'm not the biggest fan of having them directly too close. It's way too close, yeah.
And you know, guys, it's one thing when you're looking through a camera or you're watching a video, but it's really another thing when you're making it in person. I always, always urge to, when something looks nice in person, sometimes it doesn't on camera. That's why it's always good to have two opinions. Or if you're there by yourself, run back, snap a pic, or just look at it if you can already see, spot the mistake. But yeah, these small details, sometimes you'll be like in person, it looks great. And then you take a photo and you're like, oh, those two things are too close to each other. All right, I like that. See, sometimes it's about symmetry. Don't be afraid. Also, small ones, never put the same sizes beside each other. So if you have to put two orbs together, try to make them different sizes at least. Again, back. Just like that. See how much quicker it is? You know, I was thinking about all the times I was cutting two 60s in half, and there are times when you need to do that, but sometimes it's nice. <laughs> to just tape a balloon. All right, I'm gonna step back again. Look what I have. It's looking good. It's looking good. It's just the bottom is okay. Now we need to do the top. So let's get another bigger orb. I'm gonna go off camera and inflate another orb. Now guys, here's a little tip. So I want this orb right here, right? So if I take my gaff tape and I tape it, you're always gonna see this right here. You're gonna see this little connection piece. So here's my little tip. My little tip is to take a bit of these five inches, okay? Run them through. So twist the orb into the little five inches like that. And you want to take an end of the five inches, pull it out, and just twist around. And that way, I can take this, and when I put it up, that little section will be hidden. So that little bit that I have will be hidden up like this. So it'll even look like the orb is sitting behind a bit. So I'm going to take my tape. Go up. See exactly where it is that I want to position it. Let's say that's the place that I want it to be at. There, now I'm gonna take my little bit of tape and from the back, again, I'm gonna pull it back. I'm gonna stick my hand in, and I'm just gonna tape the five inch at the bottom there down to the cluster. And that just secures that little bit up there. And that little white hole that we have piercing through, we're gonna fix that up with florals later, or even a little five inch, so it depends on what you like. So now that we have our last orb there, I just wanna put a small one, because I feel like a small one needs to be up there. Let's see if I have one more small one. You guys see how frustrating it is to shape these things? I tell you, I've never made a sweet cart uh, garland that was the same, ever. <laughs> so even though they come the same carts, <laughs> your garland will never be the same. And again, these orbs are all meant to have no wrinkles. So you'll see the seam, but no wrinkles. So keep going until you see no wrinkle. Sometimes the wrinkles will disappear from here, but there'll still be some wrinkles here. Keep going. It's only when you see no wrinkles anywhere, that's when they're good to go. And this part here will flatten out. So I'm thinking of putting this over here. Again, I'm going to put the orb tape down to this balloon, so the orb is going to go right into it. Perfect. And again, that little hole, we're going to fill up. Or if you don't want to look at the hole and it's depressing you right now, then take some five inches and start stuffing it in. So you can either stuff in the five inch, 
just like that to fill in the hole, or you can use florals, you can secure them with gaff tape, or if you feel that the hole is nice and tight enough that it'll just hold the five inch, that's good enough as well. So I'm gonna continue going on, and what before I get to the five inch detailing, we're gonna start with the florals now that we're done with the orbs. All right guys, so now we're on to detailing. I grabbed a little bit of flowers. Now my little tip on detailing is get different kinds. So what I mean by that, these are stem flowers. So you see a bud of a flower here and you see a basic stem. These are great as like really, really accented details. Now what I also love are frayed out kind of florals like this. So these are kind of spray kinds of florals. These ones, my tip is, these go right into the garland. And these guys, they kind of go on the side. So let me show you what I mean. So this, I would position right in the middle of the garland. And these guys, I would always put out into the side so that they're never looking directly at you, but they're always either out this way or on the other side of the garland. So let's get started with these ones. Now, this has a little bit of a pink accent under here. I wanted it to pick up near the rose gold orbs. So I'm gonna put them near those. So let's start. We've got four stems of this. So I'm gonna put one right up in there, right up near the end. I'm just gonna thread it through. You can choose to cut down if your garland will be seen from the other side, but I choose not to. Because the thicker stem here um, it actually holds pretty well in place, and if you are finding that for some reason it's falling out, let's say you want the flower to be looking down, just don't be afraid to bend it around the balloon, and now you kind of have a hinge that sits into the garland. So if you can't put them in straight, just give them a little bend. All right, now let's see how that looks. We have our little pops there. Now let's continue with the more stemmed out flowers. So these guys you could just take, clip off a couple at a time and just place them where you'd like them. Some people like to take them, we'll show you a couple of ways, and just pull them apart like that and just place them in if you want them all kind of scattered out in one area. Another little tip that I could show you is you could take the flowers, take a little five inch here, and put the five inches right between the flowers like that. And now you could take this and stick it right in, and it automatically fills the hole and creates a little floral piece on the side. So from here I can take it manipulate them down, and now half are over there and half are sort of over here. That's sort of one way to do it. The rest I'm just gonna take up, regularly cut, and position into place.
All right, guys, and the last step is going to be the five inches. So the five inches we put on the detail, same way we would put it on the orbs. We put on a bit of gaff tape on the back, and we're going to go in and start detailing our garland like this.